Welcome, I'm Bev Adams. I own an independent paper crafting business showcasing products from Stampin' Up. I made this sweet little treat packaging with products from Stampin' Up. I sell these products and also a few items to make crafting more convenient. I have the free detailed directions for this project on my website. And if you want to print it off for free, you can just come to my website and I'll have a link for you. And I will also have links for the products that I used. And if you click those links, it'll take you to my online store at Stampin' Up. I am primarily using the paper florist dies and the elegant tag topper punch. I also have um, some a spray bottle with some alcohol in it. You could also use water, but the alcohol will dry faster. This is our lemon lolly cardstock. I also have bubble bath and lemon lime twist. It's going to be really easy to make quite a few of these at once, and it's kind of a nice treat to pass out. If you are making multiples, do your scoring first. So uh, score it at two and a half, three and a half, and six, and then bring it over this way and it's gonna be just two inches wide. So they'll be already scored for you. And so you can cut off. This will make five with a sheet of cardstock. You will need a little bit more cardstock, so you probably will need two sheets. And you will want a one inch strip. And again, you can cut it at, so this is six and a half, and if you cut a, a whole bunch of them, you can score these at two, three, five, and six. And you will want to crease all those score lines. I suppose you could crease them all at the same time before you cut them, but sometimes when they don't lay flat, it's hard to cut them. You will have this little half inch um, tab at the end. This piece will have a long piece and another long piece and then a short piece and another long piece. So this is this short piece is the bottom and then it's going to be folded over with a flap like so. And you're going to go ahead and punch this flap. So it's going to be the one with two big pieces. And so that gives you a beautiful little flap. And we're going to just make this into a little box. Just the sides of the box. But I do want, anytime I use 3D projects, I want to use the Stamp and Seal Plus or liquid glue if you don't mind waiting for it to dry a few seconds. And if you fold it, it will be nice and flat either way. And we're just going to glue this onto the sides here so this stays put. This is the front, so I probably want to put that one in the back. And I just want to have it all the way down. I can actually have it flat, have it all the way down here. And then open it up and close it here.
And really, you could decorate this any way you want. And you can keep this closed several ways. You could just do, do a glue dot and hold it closed that way. There are also these very thin um, Velcro dots. And so these are 3 8 of an inch and just hardly any thickness to them at all. I suggest that you put the uh, rough part on your flap. And then pull off a soft one and stick the soft side with the adhesive out and then just close it. I was actually inspired to do this when I went to a luau and got this for my for my hair and I thought I would do that. I found these clips and I'll I guess I can put a link I got these on Amazon and I think there must be a hundred of them and they were fairly cheap. And they are hair clips, so you could use them for your hair. And so the thing about this is it does stick out a little bit here. But if I put my flower over here, I think it'll be just fine. Also on Amazon, I got these lemon old fashioned candies and they're individually wrapped and you can fit three of these in your little box. There's probably a million other candies you could fit in. I think you could fit those um, Ghirardelli Square um, chocolates in here. And then we just need to make our flower. So I'm bringing in my little stamp and cut and emboss machine. I like to use the light gray platform. It seems to go through my machine better. And I have cut some strips of bubble bath that are three inches wide, so they fit in nicely. I have two pieces. I'm gonna use this die and cut it two times. And I'm going to use this die and cut it one time with the lemon lime twist. And this piece right here, I'm going to cut with the, the lemon lolly. So at three inches wide, if you put this right up against the edge and cover it up. And if you have the top one a little bit longer, then you can roll it through. And you will need six of these petals for this project. And so at three inches wide, you can make a second set right here. And I can cut out two of the leaves. I'm actually thinking the leaves, because the leaves are embossed, you probably want to cut them out one at a time. Have that nice little embossing on it. And then this funny sun shape. This die set cuts all kinds of different flowers. I think you could make a beautiful rose with that one. And all these leaves, a bunch of different flower centers. I was experimenting with some of these. And this one I didn't get glued on very well, but this piece you can roll up and make this fancy center. Like I said, you're gonna need six petals, so you wanna separate these out. One, two. And if you would like, um, 
you can draw around the edge. I thought it was going to actually blur more than it did on this flower. You could also definitely use a blending brush or you could scribble on a block as a palette. So I'm gonna just actually suggest that you use the water painter just to get a little bit of an edge on there. We wanna scrunch these up and I think it will be easiest and have a better look if you scrunch this up while they're wet. And so I have used the alcohol and I'm getting these quite wet. You could actually even dip it in alcohol, but rather than having a dish of alcohol, I thought spraying it was a wiser thing. But you want to get these saturated. And then scrunch. When you open it up, you want to be a little bit gentle. You don't want to tear this, but then shape it like a petal and you might want to kind of fold it. And this has a split down here. And even while it's wet, you can put some glue there and cross these and then let them dry. Let me do another one for you. So scrunch and cross, cross these. Put a little dot of glue. Cross these and maybe have three of them that are more scrunched and folded than the others. So maybe I'll scrunch this one a little bit more. And you're going to do that with all six of your petals. And I don't know if it matters, but I put the glue on the same left flap. It doesn't matter whether you put it on the left flap or the right flap but I think if you put it on the same flap for all six petals, it will turn out better. This piece, we want to scrunch from the center. So we're gonna be scrunching these up. You kinda wanna have, so you kinda want this flat section to glue it to your flower, but all of these need to be kinda pinched up like so. And then you're going to put three petals, kind of divide it up into three. And these three were not as scrunched as the other three. So these are going to be my outer petals. And then some inner petals and I'm putting one petal be and I'm putting this petal between two petals underneath. Another dot of glue for my flower center. And then in a perfect world, you would let that dry. Now, I used the liquid glue and it worked just great, but it does take a while to dry. For this one, I'm going to use glue dots because that's pretty instant. And I want to put my petal, I want to put my leaf on first and I want to kind of have my leaf extend and kind of cover up most of this. And then I'm going to put my flower down here on this end. And so I want to kind of pinch or roll the glue dot here. And I want to have at least two glue dots on here. But I want them down by the stem so that I 
so that this flower will be more centered on our packaging. And this really does need to dry a little bit longer. I think when I put it on here, yeah, I think that if you put it on far enough over, it will be centered on your package. And that's it. Here is the web address for this project where you'll find the free detailed directions and links for the products I used. Just click the links and you'll be taken to my online store at Stampin' Up! Click Home near the top of my page and you'll find lots of resources. Under Shop, you can find the products I offer to make crafting more convenient. How to get free products with my frequent shopper rewards and a link to my online store at Stampin' Up! Click Inspiration to scroll all my projects back to 2011, most with detailed directions and videos. Though the products in those older projects have been retired, you may find techniques, layouts, or color combinations to inspire you today. If you're new to stamping, you might want to look at the basics. You'll find how to cut card bases and layers, and some of my favorite tools. Under Organization, you'll find lots of free resources such as catalog tabs, labels and case inserts, color tools, and much more. More organization means more time for stamping. You can learn about my Evernote notebook. I have a note for every current product that Stampin' Up! has for sale right now. It really makes finding just exactly what you want very easy. And you can create your own notebook and search through all of the things that you own to find just what you need. Come stamp with me here in Ventura County, California, or get the best deal of all and join my team of crafters. The team is called SIP Together and it stands for Stamps, Ink, and Paper Together. Be sure to subscribe to my website and on my YouTube channel. I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks for joining me. Talk to you soon.